Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm doing a deep dive into the new Portrait Bokeh AI tool that's in Luminar AI. Update 4 it just came out. If you missed my first look video, it's there. But what I wanted to do here is dive in a little bit deeper and a little bit more focused, no pun intended, on the tools slash sliders that are in the Bokeh AI tool. Portrait Bokeh AI tool, I should say. As I said in the previous video, it's called Portrait Bokeh AI because it doesn't work on objects and things like that. So. I've got a photo here from Unsplash. I'll put a link to the artist down below. I'm really appreciative of the artists on Unsplash sharing their photos because it gives me an opportunity to edit portraits that I haven't taken. I don't take a lot of them, but I'm trying real hard. I've, I've got some recent ones I'm gonna try to feature in videos if I can. Anyway, I've got this portrait here, so I just wanted to point out I did, take, did not take it, but I think it's a cool portrait. I did crop it. There was a bit of empty kind of dead space at the top. I just wanted to focus more in on the subject. Speaking of subjects, the subject here is Portrait Bokeh AI. And as you know, it is AI-based tool that automatically detects the human in the photo or humans. It does work on groups of people and it'll uh, allow you to blur the background, creating different uh, depths of field, uh, you know, nice bokeh look in the background. So you can, uh, once you drag this slider here, the amount slider, it'll start to um, blur out the background based on how much you uh, use. Um, also, after a couple of seconds of, uh, after having dragged the amount slider, you can hover your mouse over the photo and you will see that it has created a mask. And now the masking is really precise and really good, but I, I do wanna point out it's not perfect. In this photo, for example, it's got, um, you can see that the colors down here, which really dark in the bottom, if I mouse away, actually, you know what I'll do? You can hit the forward slash key to hide the mask. But if you look down here, the mask was covering that part of the seat. And you know, I don't really want it to cover that part of the seat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and this is where I get into brush control. It is a deep dive. I'm gonna go through all these sliders. You, you can basically click on focus, defocus or restore. And that will allow you to either paint in an area of focus with the focus uh, tab or defocus or uh, restore, which will bring back the original mass. So I'm gonna start with defocus. I'm gonna go ahead and just go to opacity of 100. By the way, you've got a radius and a softness here. The radius can be increased or decreased um, by clicking the bracket key. The left bracket key will shrink it as I'm doing now, and the right bracket key will increase the size of it. If you want to adjust the softness, which is the distance between the inner and outer circle here on my brush, and allows either a really soft kind of gradual fade or a really hard edge, you can just do a shift and then a bracket key. So a shift with a left bracket key is making a harder brush. You can see the brush changing in my screen and also the softness going down in the tool. And there you go, I'm at, at zero. Or hold the shift down and click the right bracket key to create a softer brush. Personally, I use pretty much a soft brush every time. Um, and then opacity is opacity, so you can increase or decrease the strength of that. And that is with the slider. And by the way, there's a trick here. If you're on focus and want to get to defocus, you can just hit the X key and it will change it to defocus. And you can hit X to come back to focus. That works on a Mac. I assume it's the same on Windows. I don't really know. So um, I'm going to go ahead and hit X because what I want to do is defocus some of these areas. I'm going to left bracket key to shrink the size of my cursor. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and I'm at 100% opacity. So I'm just going to come in here and remove some of this area that the mask automatically picked up because that's a seat and I could care less about it being in focus. So I'm going to defocus and I've painted that in. Now, for example, what if I said, oh gosh, you know, I really messed it up. I want to get the new, or excuse me, get the original mask back. That's where you go to restore and you can come in here with your brush and then just paint over what you've done. And as you can see, it added it back with the edges and everything. So I, I'm not doing anything fancy there. It's remembering the edges. It's restoring that original mask, but that was a demo. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that again. So left bracket key to shrink it. I'm back on defocus and I'm going to come over here and just wipe this area clean. Get rid of that red. I see a little bit on the bottom there. I see a little bit over here. I'm gonna get rid of that. A little bit kind of behind her back. And I see a little bit over here as well. So I'm gonna turn the mask off and I'm gonna come in here. And now what I recommend is that you go kind of slow and take your time. I don't feel like you have to have perfect edges here, um, but I just went over her knee a little bit. I'm gonna hit X and go back with the uh, smaller brush to paint that focus back in because um, I think it's a little bit better to be over slightly than it is to be under slightly. 
Okay, so now we've got a mask looking, you know, about the way I want it to look. I've got this at 100, which by the way, I don't necessarily recommend going to 100 because um, you're gonna end up getting something that's a bit unreal looking, especially if you make further adjustments down here in the background, and that's what we're gonna do now. So I'm gonna pull this down to like, you know, 30 or something, um, and I wanna focus on the background. So basically, the focus area is what's in pink or red, and that's adjusted based on the stuff that we did with the brush control section, and now in background, uh, because I've isolated that, and none of that is red, remember, that background is gonna get darker because I'm gonna drag this to the left and uh, remove brightness, or I'm gonna go left you know, with brightness. I'm gonna darken it, I guess, is an easy way to say it. Uh, or if you wanna brighten it, you go to the right and do that. In this case, I'd rather go a little bit darker. So I've done that, and then highlights glow, as the name implies, it's gonna put a glow into the highlights, which can make for a really cool and interesting kind of look. Now, I'm not gonna actually use it in this edit, but as you can see, those brighter highlights in the background are getting a little bit of a pop, and it can add a nice little bit of background light to your photo. I'm gonna double click that, hit it back to zero. You can also adjust the temperature, which is great for me because I always adjust temperature, and I've often done this in even the few portraits that I've done. Um, I often am adjusting temperature, but I'm doing it with radial masks, so this allows me to just cool that background off or warm it up if I want, but that's what it looks like warmer. I like it cooler, so I'm gonna take that to the left. Okay, now we're on to depth correction. This is a very powerful slider. I recommend that you use it kind of sparingly, and that's only because um, it will basically adjust the depth in the photo uh, that's in focus. So let me just show you, it's easier. If I drag it to the right, you can see a little bit more things are in focus, and as I drag it to the left, it's pulling that blur forward, right? So that's the depth. It uses their 3D depth mapping technology, which is AI stuff, and to the left, which is generally what I'm doing with it. Let me reset that to zero. You can see what it looks like there. I'm generally coming in and pulling the depth correction to the left because I wanna pull that blur a little forward, whereas if I go to the right, I'm pushing the blur further away. So I wanna pull it a little bit forward, which I like, but just be careful because if you go, let's say, negative 100, what you're getting by blurring the background and temperature and brightness, all those things, I'm getting more separation between the subject and the background which is good in some regard, but you'll notice there's some really hard edges here around the hair, and we're gonna have to go work on that. And also, when the depth correction is negative 100, for example, and then you increase the portrait, I'm just gonna go to 100 just to make it really over the top, but if you have a high amount of portrait bokeh AI, and then a negative depth correction that's pretty high, you're gonna see it doesn't really seem to fit. It looks like I cut and pasted her from a different photo and stuck her into this one. In other words, the edges don't blend and it doesn't make visual sense. So I recommend being very careful with these two and kind of blending them together because you want it to be kind of a natural transition from subject to blurred background. Now edge correction comes in, especially with things like hair. So in order to zoom in, I need to um, close the tool because when you're in the tool, uh, you're basically in masking mode. So you gotta close it, I'm gonna zoom in, and now I'm gonna get into edge correction. So if I drag this all the way to the right, and again, I'm going over the top on purpose, you'll see that it's, it's a, it makes a basically a really hard edge. You can see over here, um, if you look at her hair when I move my mouse, it's a really strange kind of cut. Um, and then if you go to zero, it's a, it's a much more gradual. There's a little bit more hair showing through and things like that. I'll have to uh, be honest, so far I'm not using edge correction very much, and I do recommend that you're careful with it, especially if you're dragging it to the right, because it will create a fairly hard edge, which means you go from an in-focus subject to a really out-of-focus background, and that blended, that gradient zone is basically zero, so just be careful with it. Here's one of the things I recommend doing. Like I said, her hair needs a little bit of work over there. If you look at the original photo, there it is. You can see like around her head, there's a little bit of hair sticking up. There's a few stray ones. And on that right side of her face, this left side of the photo, there's a number of hairs hanging down. So when I uh, show you with, with the Bokeh AI included, a lot of that has gone away. So this is where I come in and I wanna add some focus back. And so this is where the brush masking comes in really handy. I'll get like a really low opacity brush. Let's start with like a 20. Um, I think that'll look good. And uh, maybe a little bit bigger radius. And all I'm gonna do is just come in here and just brush a little bit of focus into that area. And I just go over it a couple of times and I maybe go around this edge. So I get a little bit of transitional zone, maybe a little bit on top of her head, maybe a little bit over here as well. 
And what I'm doing is just creating a little bit more focus so that it's not such a distinct blur, uh, you know, difference between what's in focus and what's blurred. You can see now, I basically brought back some of her hair. Um, it, it's much more apparent now on the top and right over here, I think. You can see that her hair is coming through much better than it was before I had done this last bit of masking. So again, take your time, go slow, experiment, and use that uh, focus and defocus option to kind of figure out what the delicate dance is for you in a, uh, any particular photo. So I think that covers all the various tools. Now, I've got these settings applied. Let me close that so I can back out again. And I wanna look at it kind of uh, holistically. And I feel like the transition is still a little bit abrupt. So this is where I might would come in and adjust the amount as well as the um, depth correction, pull that back a little bit. I just don't want an incredibly awkward transition between in focus and out of focus because otherwise it looks like you cut and pasted her. My opinion, you know, every photo is gonna vary and season to taste, that sort of thing, but just be really careful and don't hesitate to use the focus and defocus with a low opacity brush to go around the edges. Like I could probably do some more of that here. And in fact, I think I will. Um, I think I'll get a little bit smaller brush and just come along here and add it a little bit back simply because I wanna pick up some of those stray hairs and make it look like she belongs in the photo because as far as I know, not my photo, but as far as I know, she was actually sitting there and this is not a composite. I, I feel fairly sure that it is. There's the original photo and there it is with our adjustments to portrait bokeh AI. So that is my deep dive. Now there's a couple of other things I would do to this photo. The first one is I'm gonna go add a little bit of mystical. So when I do that, you'll see that's creating a little bit more uh, contrast between what's in focus and what's not. And so if I go over the top, it gets way too dreamy looking. I just wanna go kinda of light, something like that. I'm, again, I'm creating a little bit more separation by darkening the background and the foreground is a little bit brighter. And then to top that off, I'm gonna also add a slight vignette. I'm gonna choose my subject. I'm gonna put that right here about on her hand. And what I wanna do is just add a little bit of inner light. You know, you don't wanna go too high because it gets really bright and kind of highlighty, almost like it's, you know, hot, um, too hot, so to speak, on her face. But a little bit of inner light, a little bit of vignette I think has helped. I can click choose subject again to turn that off um, and you know tighten it up as you see fit. But I think that's given a little bit of extra boost to the photo. There it is before vignette and there it is after. And here's my entire photo edit. You can see quite a bit more focus in the background, not a ton, but that's okay. It's a bit more focused and now it's a little bit softer, a little bit more blurred, a little bit dreamier. And I think uh, it's, it's, it's a nice result. So there it is one more time before and after. That's a couple of tools like mystical and vignette that I would use often on portraits. But really what I wanted to do here is dive deep into portrait bokeh AI, powerful tool, very intelligent masking, works on groups of people. I'm gonna do some more on this. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. If you don't have Luminar AI, there's a link down below. And I'll be back soon with more videos, my friends. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon. Take care and adios.